I'm Mike, and in this video, it's time to start tackling the industry that makes millions off telling you that animal fat is good for you. It's the fat industry, aka the good news about your bad habits industry. And today, by special request, we're going to start with Nina Teichel's and her big fat surprise, which you can read while eating a pat of butter and feel like you're eating a salad. Don't get me wrong, I don't hate Nina Teichel's, I don't think she's a horrible person or anything like that, but I think that her thesis that saturated fat is actually good for you is extremely dangerous. I feel like when people go and read her book, they don't read it to actually learn anything new, they just read it to get a pat on the back to keep on keeping on with a standard American diet full of meat, dairy, and eggs. And unlike evidence required to change your opinion, the evidence needed to reinforce your existing opinion does not need to be very strong. And we'll see that Nina pulls out some pretty weak evidence, as well as just pulling some figures out of thin air and in general just pandering to the desires of the average American. We're gonna look at our TEDx talk where she starts off by presenting the Maasai people who allegedly ate massive amounts of meat and dairy. She presents the Maasai as a pinnacle of health, comparing them to this victim of carbs, Fat Louisa. Who's on the USDA recommended low fat, high grain diet here? This guy over here is a Maasai warrior. Fat Louisa was a Pima Indian in the 1930s and 40s and she's obese. Presenting things like this is a testament to just how little evidence there is to support her claims. She has to resort to a Pima Indian woman from a century ago, her tribe just came out of famine, and there's really no data on what the Pima Indians actually ate. So she can claim anything she wants. You know what? I think Fat Louisa was eating people. Prove that wrong, Nina. Prove that wrong. Here's some other <laughs> Victims of carbs. Here are the Taramara people who ate 80% of their calories from carbs, have unmatched physical abilities, and we actually have data on their diet. Then there's the Okinawans, the longest living culture in the world, with 85% of their diet from carbs and loads of data on their population. And the list goes on, but let's actually take a closer look at the Maasai people. This is the study that Nina is referring to as George Mann's study of 600 Maasai. Again, Nina presents them as awesomely healthy, but George Mann's thesis is kind of like, why aren't they all dropping dead of heart attacks? Because when speaking generally about the Maasai, quote, measurements of the aorta showed extensive atherosclerosis or artery disease, which equaled that of old US men. Of course, Nina fails to mention this and starts outright lying instead. And they weren't particularly active, they weren't particularly active. She pulled this out of thin air, directly from the study. Quote, these pastoral people are exceptionally active. And from another study on the Maasai by the International Livestock Center of Africa, they found that these people are precisely 175% as active as Americans. And he's on a diet of three to five pounds of meat a day. And from that same study, they found that the Maasai only ate meat about one to five times per month. But the Maasai did eat a ton of dairy, so how is that Maasai warrior not fat? Well, the study did find that the Maasai run at a calorie deficit of only 50 to 70% of the recommended energy intake, which explains why they found their BMI was on the very low end of normal. And looking at that meat, beef has a thousand calories per pound, so at three to five pounds of meat per day, that's three to five thousand calories, which is not a calorie deficit. So I'm sorry, Nina, you're just lying. I would also like to note that if vegans were averaging on the very low end of normal, they would be considered super unhealthy and emaciated, but when you're trying to use someone to sell saturated fat, they look so healthy. And she wins for blatantly misrepresenting the data with... And he found only two incidents of possible heart attacks heart attacks, possible. And directly from the study, quote, one Maasai man with unequivocal ECG evidence of infarction or heart attack. That's three lines in a row, Nina. You're on thin ice. Finally, conclusions of the Maasai health from man's studies are often criticized because in man's first study on the Maasai that looked at 400 people, for example, only three of them were over 55. And as you can see by this American Heart Association chart, heart attacks and fatal heart disease massively increases after the age of 55. Anyway, enough of the Maasai. They are clearly not a population worth emulating and definitely not a reason to eat more animal fat. Now we move on to her main idea. Saturated fat is actually good for you. This is where she lines right up with the rest of the good news about your bad habits industry and makes a case in favor of saturated fat. And as we know, the vast majority of saturated fat comes from animal products. 
And she's really just riding this wave, whether you're looking at the Wall Street Journal or that famous Time Magazine cover, people eat this stuff up because it's what they want to hear. This whole idea is based largely off studies like the Siri Torino and Chaudhry meta-analyses that were funded by Big Dairy. The Siri Torino meta-analysis was authored partly by Robert Krauss, who has been funded by the dairy industry for over 15 years, as well as getting money from the Atkins Foundation. As for the Chaudhry meta-analysis, the Harvard School of Public Health was not amused, saying it, quote, contains multiple errors and omissions, and the conclusions are seriously misleading, leading them to request a retraction of the paper entirely. Anyway, you get the point. This is where Nina starts ripping into Ansel Keys, who fathered the connection between saturated fat and heart disease. Keys did a lot of, you know, there's hardly a better word for it than kind of saying fudging the data. He portrays them as this loon that goes all around the world cherry picking data. But here's the thing, I don't give a crap if Ansel Keys was completely insane. If you look at the sheer amount of data supporting the saturated fat and bad cholesterol argument, it's astounding. She talks about the diet heart hypothesis, where eating saturated fat increases LDL, which leads to heart disease. She calls this a hypothesis, and it may have been a hypothesis in the 1950s, but nowadays we just call it how people in the US die. She presents this as a very weak, unproven connection. How about 375 controlled feeding experiments, some of which contained thousands of people? The increase in bad or LDL cholesterol was so predictably linked with saturated fat consumption that they gave it an equation, the Hegstead equation, which shows how increasing animal products saturated fat increases LDL and no sane person is saying that LDL does not cause heart disease. As this study shows, it's so bad that you can take a vegetarian and just feed them one meat meal a day and watch their cholesterol raise by nearly 20%, going from a low risk of getting a heart attack to a high risk of getting a heart attack. And then when you stop feeding them that meat meal, their cholesterol goes right back down to where it was. Then she tries to say that even though low saturated fat diets decrease your chance of dying from heart disease, you're probably gonna die of cancer. She bases this off the LA Veterans Trial where they essentially fed people weird soy isolates and 40% of their calories from soy oil. As I'll explain in my upcoming video on the dangers of oil, super high oil, high fat diets basically cause lipemia of the blood, which is fat in the blood, which lowers the oxygen content, creating an ideal environment for cancer. This is not a good representation of a low fat plant-based diet or any low saturated fat diet for that matter but it may be a good representation of Soylent. And I think this moment takes the cake for a complete lack of logic. First, she starts by saying, Heart attacks may have gone down, but your overall risk of dying didn't go down. And in the end, you know, that's what you want to know. Like, what's my risk of dying? <laughs> then she attacks the more plant-based diet of the Japanese with, One of the populations that nutrition researchers have obsessed about are the Japanese, because they have that, you know, lots of fruits and vegetables, or at least vegetables and rice diet. They do have lower rates of heart disease, but they have astronomically much higher rates of stroke. Newsflash, Nina, Japan is the longest living country on Earth. And what is Nina's definition of astronomical? Well, the US stroke rate is 25 in 100,000, and Japanese stroke rate is like 34 in 100,000, so a 30% increase. I think I will take Japan's life expectancy for that. Then she aggrandizes the Atkins diet. So, at the end of all this, that's Robert Atkins, <laughs> eating like a Maasai warrior. And Nina, if you were really concerned about not dying, you would know that low carb diets like the Atkins diet increase all cause mortality. Here's a study published in the Harvard Journal looking at 130,000 people over two decades. Those who ate the most animals had a 31% increased chance of dying during the study compared to those who ate the least. Finally, they also looked at low carb plant-based diets and found that all-cause mortality and death from cardiovascular disease were decreased in the plant eaters, showing that it was that saturated fat rich meat after all. On a serious note, I think of the years of life that were lost by the thousands of people that decided to follow the Atkins diet, as well as Nina's readers that are gonna go home and just keep eating more of this saturated fat in these animal products like meat, fish, dairy, and eggs and increase their chance of death. 
So in conclusion, Nina's whole saturated fat thesis is based deeply in dairy-funded science, and her presentation of the Maasai as the pinnacle of health was just kind of ridiculous. And finally, her recommendations and logic when it comes to longevity is just completely upside down. There's a reason that virtually every reputable medical institution recommends you to lower your saturated fat intake because it increases bad cholesterol. And if you really want to find this out for yourself, you can go on the Nina diet, get yourself a home cholesterol monitor, eat more saturated fat, and watch your bad cholesterol rise. Thank you for watching. His other, what else he ate was um, milk and blood. That's it.